Good evening, gentlemen. This is a brand new third generation PMAG, and I just want to show you a modification that some guys do on these to optimize them for 300 blackout. If you're not planning on using them for 556, if you just want to run 300 blackout through them, um, there's something you can do. You may have heard of trimming down the inside ribs of the magazine. If you look on the inside of the magazine here, you'll see a rib right there. There's one on each side right there. And what that's for is on a 5.56, that correlates with the front of the shoulder where the neck starts, right there. Holds the rounds in place, keeps them lined up. Problem being, and it's not necessarily a problem for everybody, but the issue is that on a 300 blackout, that area is obviously much larger. Now this, of course, is a very fat bullet in the 300 blackout. It's not necessarily an issue with other projectiles. You know, if you've got something that's a little more, uh, a little more suited to that application, like the Barnes here, it's a very slender bullet, um, may not be a problem. But uh, with some rounds that are uh, fatter, like a heavy subsonic on the left there, what can happen is, as these goes down into the magazine, uh, that those ribs on either side cause them, instead of sitting perfectly straight, it kicks the front in a little bit like that, causes them to stack kind of funny, um, not necessarily sit nice and even in the magazine. It can cause binding and uh, other kinds of issues with it, feed issues. You know, as they're coming out, if you have a blunt bullet like this, it can uh, take a nosedive into the bridge in between the feed ramps instead of the uh, feed ramps themselves. And so what some guys do, like I said, if they're just planning on using the magazine for 300 blackout anyway, uh, you can go in there and trim those down a little bit, which I've done on some of my other magazines here, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing that. You know, some guys will go in there with a file or something and, uh, and get it out. Um, what I like to do, what I found works best for me is use a nice long sharp chisel like this. It allows you to reach inside with the flat edge, grab the edge of that, and you know, obviously being careful, you've got the sharp edge inside the mag body that kind of kind of protects you if it slips. But using the uh, the flat edge of that, go in there and trim that down bit by bit until you get it as low as you want it. Just go deeper and deeper, and then as far as you go, um, if you're not going to go all the way through, obviously, you know, with something like this, this is only a 20 round magazine, and a chisel like this can reach you know about halfway in there. And then if you really wanted to do the whole thing, you could flip it around and trim on the bottom as well. But it at least allows you to do the top couple inches in the magazine where the rounds are actually, you know, feeding up into the gun. And uh, and that, I think, makes most of the difference. Um, but this allows you to get down in there, do the top couple inches, and then if you are only going to do, you know, the top half of the magazine or whatever, the bottom is largely spring anyway, uh, you just blend it in back up to full height, you know, as far in as you go. And kind of uh, taper it up so those rounds make a smooth transition. And that allows at least the ones up on top... Um, to sit nice and straight. I'll uh, I'll pop this together and you can uh, you can see the difference. Um, you know, a lot of guys use the uh, a lot of guys use the P bags for 300 blackout, and it's not generally an issue. So I don't mean to make it sound like it's uh, like it's some big deal that has to be done. But uh, you know, if that's if that's what the magazines are going to be used for, and if for whatever reason if you want to use P mags. Um, you know, why not optimize them, especially if you're a hand loader and you like being able to experiment with uh, different kinds of slugs, you know, instead of just using spitzers all the time, using something a little heavier, a little fatter like that. Uh, so here I've got uh, about four rounds in each of these magazines, and you can see the one on the uh, the one on the right is the factory magazine, and the one on the left is the modified. And so, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the one on the left is the factory magazine. You can see the rib still intact there on the left side and the one on the right is the one that's had them trimmed down so you can see on the right the rounds are nice and straight and on the left that bottom one is kind of kicked in towards the side um so you imagine it or towards the center so you imagine if every single round in the magazine is angled slightly like that that causes the these to to stack and take up more room and they're just not going to sit straight um, it's going to increase your friction and uh, potentially could even give you feeding issues so yeah if you look at the black space to the left of the nose of the bullet there Compare it over here, you can see this one is sitting nice and straight, and that one's kicked over at an angle. So there you go. That's uh, something you can do to uh, give you a little, maybe a little more versatility, or at the very least, just uh, help your OCD a little if you want your mags to feed uh, as smoothly as possible and uh, cause everything to work as well as you can for 300 blackouts. So there you go. Hopefully that was informative. As always, gentlemen, have fun and be safe.